Hey guys, today's video is about a really interesting topic, mastectomies versus top surgery. Why should you have a plastic surgeon who routinely does top surgery do your top surgery versus a breast surgeon who routinely does mastectomies or breast removal for cancer purposes or genetic purposes? And this is a topic that I've just heard coming up more and more recently for whatever reason. I don't know why that is, but some of my patients have been asking me about this and I was actually reading threads on Reddit the other day on top surgery and this topic came up and someone was asking some questions about insurance coverage in cases where patients may not want to go see a therapist before top surgery. Maybe they've never seen a therapist before. Maybe they just don't want to see a therapist. They don't want to deal with insurance for whatever reason and someone was like well why don't you just go to a breast surgeon and have them do a mastectomy and then it's a win-win you don't have to deal with all these headaches and so I want to go ahead and explain the differences between top surgery and a mastectomy because these are very very different procedures and I want you guys to understand why it is so important to have your top surgery done by somebody that does Top surgery. So if you went to a breast surgeon to have a mastectomy with no reconstruction, meaning that they're not going to put a tissue expander in, an implant in, and they're not going to do any flaps to fill in some tissue to reconstruct a breast, that would leave you looking really skeletonized. Their goals are very different from a plastic surgeon's goals. The goals of a breast surgeon are to remove every cell of breast tissue in order to prevent cancer in the future. So this is done for patients who have a strong family history of breast cancer. Maybe they have a genetic mutation like BRCA1, BRCA2. There are a lot of other genetic mutations that put patients at high risk for cancer in the future. If you went ahead and had a mastectomy with a breast surgeon, this would leave your chest wall looking concave, skeletonized. It wouldn't look uniform, especially laterally where there's not as much muscle bulk to fill in that contour. You're going to have a big divot here if you remove all the breast tissue with no reconstruction. The skin would be so thin over the chest wall and it just wouldn't give you the chest wall that you're probably looking for. Now occasionally I do get a patient that might have a strong family history of breast cancer or maybe they're interested in more of a risk reduction procedure like a prophylactic mastectomy. Maybe they are concerned they might have a genetic mutation and in that case I would always recommend that they see a genetics counselor and a breast surgeon and if they do have any predispositions even without a positive genetics test a strong family history is also an indication to possibly consider a prophylactic mastectomy and if I have a patient who is interested in a prophylactic mastectomy I would definitely have them see a breast surgeon as well in that case I would actually recommend that both myself and the breast surgeon be involved in the procedure in order to perform the risk reducing mastectomy but also to reconstruct the chest wall adequately in order to give you a uniform aesthetic chest wall appearance most commonly I do fat grafting for this which involves taking some fat out of the abdomen if it's available with liposuction processing that fat in order to refine it and grafting the fat meaning actually inserting the fat using cannulas into the chest wall in order to provide some additional tissue so that you don't end up with a concave look and if you are a candidate for a double incision approach you may still be able to have a free nipple graft in this case and that graft shaping and the aesthetics of placing the nipple and sizing the nipple really should be done by somebody that knows how to do that and that has done top surgery in the past and alternatively if you're a good candidate for a periareolar or a keyhole approach you may be able to have what's called a nipple sparing mastectomy where the breast tissue is removed usually through an IMF in incision or an inframammary incision along the inferior border of the chest, which is a really nice incision for patients that have very little nipple ptosis, meaning that the nipple is not hanging down. And those are usually the same as the patients who are good candidates for the periareolar or the keyhole incision. So basically all of the breast tissue would be removed through that inferior 
chest incision or IMF incision, and you would have some fat grafting. And then as a second stage procedure, you may be able to have some nipple contouring, meaning reducing the size of the areola, which would be very similar to a periareolar approach. This would probably be best done in two stages. And the reason for this is the breast tissue removal in a nipple sparing mastectomy is going to be a little bit more aggressive than it would be for top surgery. And the skin is just gonna be a little bit thin. And there is a higher risk for nipple loss in this case. And in smokers, for example, in patients who have other wound healing risk factors, this would be a significant concern. So I probably would want to resize and shape the nipple as a second stage procedure in that case, because I think it would just be a lot safer for the nipple. But basically, you should still be able to have the procedure that you are looking for if we're still talking about a prophylactic mastectomy procedure, which means that you don't have cancer. You may have a genetic predisposition, you may have a strong family history, but as long as you don't have breast cancer, you are going to have what's called a prophylactic mastectomy procedure. And the aesthetics of that procedure just tend to be a little bit nicer than if you were going to have a breast cancer removed. Now, there is going to be some risk reduction after top surgery in terms of reducing your future risk of breast cancer because about 95% of the breast tissue is removed, but there is still about 5% of the breast tissue remaining. And again, this is done on purpose in order to leave some tissue behind to create that nice uniform flat chest wall. Now, it's also important to note that because you're going to have such a small percentage of breast tissue remaining on the chest wall, you may not be able to have the traditional mammogram views that you would otherwise have for a female breast. And the presence of scar tissue after top surgery can make detection of breast cancer more difficult. And if you end up finding out in the future that you might be high risk for breast cancer, you may have to have more specialized imaging studies like an MRI or more thorough clinical screening with a breast cancer specialist. So the point is you're not out of the woods. You're still going to need some follow-up for the remaining amount of breast tissue on your chest wall. And that follow-up is going to depend on your risk profile in the future. And if you already know that you have a high risk profile, it's definitely worth it to look into having this dual procedure with a breast surgeon and a plastic surgeon so that you can have your top surgery and you can have your mastectomy too. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please let me know in the comments if you'd like to see other topics related to this video and subscribe to the channel if you've not already.